Today we're visiting the beautiful town of Blois in the Loire Valley and if you are thinking this might be a town to skip if you're visiting here you would be missing out especially if you love French history and architecture. This is a can't miss spot. There has actually been a castle here since as early as 854 when it was attacked by Vikings. Joan of Arc visited here in 1429 when she was on her way to take the army out and fight the English. She was blessed by the Archbishop in Blois. The chateau itself has seen a lot of drama which we will get into shortly but the main chateau has four distinct architectural types. So if you love architecture, this is an interesting place where you can see in one building you will see medieval, gothic, renaissance, and classical. There are 564 rooms, 75 staircases, and 100 bedrooms, each with their own fireplace. The part of history where I pick up the thread for the chateau is with Louis XII, who moved the central court of France from Amboise to Blois in 1498 when he inherited the crown due to his predecessor Charles VIII's death from a head injury at nearby Amboise. You can actually see him carved in relief on his horse on his wing of the chateau. His successor, Francois Premier, actually added the incredible staircase and the wing that is the Renaissance part of the chateau between 1515 and 1524 where he used it as a residence with his Queen Claude. She actually was the daughter of Louis XII and died here at the sad age of 24 after bearing Francois seven children in seven years. After Claude's death, Francois didn't return here much and he actually moved the large giant collection of books that he had at Blois, which was one of the period's greatest libraries. After her death, he moved it to Fontainebleau and that collection, which was the French Royal Library at the time, went on to become part of the backbone of what is now the French National Library. And incidentally, Claude's mother, Anne of Brittany, also died here in 1514, the same year that Francois and Claude were married. Skipping forward through French history in 1588, Francis King Henri Trois took refuge here during the Wars of Religion at the advice of his mother, Catherine de Medici. During that period of time, from September through the end of the year in 1588, he was here with her. He actually um, removed her from his council and sort of closed everything off and sort of exiled her to be here for the rest of her days. And on December 23rd of 1588, he actually had the Duke de Guise murdered by stabbing. Legends has it in the actual king's bedroom, which you can see here. The following day, he had the Duke's brother, the Cardinal of Guise, stabbed to death in the dungeon here. And on January 5th, of 1589, so a week later, his mother Catherine also died here. Eight months later, in August of 1589, Henri himself was stabbed to death by a monk outside of Paris. France's next king, Henri Quatre, also used Blois as a residence until his own assassination in Paris in 1610, and then his widow Marie, another Medici woman who had been crowned literally the day before he died, was exiled to Blois by her son Louis XIII in 1617 because she refused to give up her regency powers and as he was still young. And as he came to age, she didn't want to step out of the way, so he exiled her here. Two years later, at the age of 43, Marie escaped her prison at Blois by scaling a rope ladder down a 40-meter wall and was spirited south to Angoulême, from where she mounted an uprising against her son called the War of Mother and Son. Louis eventually forgave her, and she returned to court, but she spent the next 20 years involved in political intrigues and exile until her death in 1642. By the French Revolution, the chateau had sat neglected for nearly 130 years, and much of its contents and emblems had been removed. It was slated for demolition, but it was actually spared that fate by being put into use as a military barracks. By 1840, it was put on the list of historic monuments and rescued, thankfully. There is also a terrific museum housed in the chateau, so you can see the architecture here, you can see the history here, and there is a terrific museum of fine arts, one of the best in France. It has 35,000 pieces works of art, sculptures, Renaissance tapestries, etc. So incredible history to visit here. If you're an English history fan, you'll also recognize the connection to Stephen of Blois, who was King of England in the 12th century, and also connections to Anne Boleyn, where as a young woman, she probably would have spent time here in the court of the young Queen Claude before her tragic turn as England's queen in the 1530s. That is a whole other story. We were here early in the day, the day we visited, so we got to walk through some of these village streets of the old part of town, amazingly quaint and charming. We walked around before any of the businesses were open, so we had the streets very much to ourselves. 
definitely worth a stop here. We, we wandered around just enough time to kind of see these old streets and we did find a cafe where we were able to grab a coffee and a little bit of breakfast before we headed out on the rest of our adventure. If you'd like to see what else we saw in the Loire Valley and we will be following up with an itinerary video of what to do for a week in the Loire, we will be providing links to that at the end of this video. As always, thanks for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.